In this video, let us see what are functions. Functions are a sequence of program instructions that performs a specific task. If you go back to our example of asking our friend to take a print, we had mentioned to follow a set of instructions. Now this set of instructions we can consider as one function. So for example, take print. If we consider this as one function, then it contains a sequence of steps for your friend to go to the printer, to choose the print job, give a print and hand over the print to you. So this set of instructions you consider as one function statement. You might be wondering why do you require a function? Why can't we just define these sequence of instructions whenever required? The main advantage of function is that once a function is defined, it can be called any number of times from any part of the program. So what it means is that you just define your function once and then you call it any number of times. So in our case, you just define take print as one function and then you call this any number of times within your program. So what you are able to achieve is you are trying to reduce the code and you are reducing the amount of effort and the errors, error prone codes. All this you are avoiding and then you are making it more extendable. Remember that functions are also called as procedures or modules depending upon the programming language. So don't get confused when in one programming language it is called a function whereas in another programming language it is called as procedure or modules. All refers to the same. Let us see the program flow of a function. Now in this example we have considered calculate age as the function name. We assume that this function defines a series of instructions in order to calculate age. So how we use is as we said before once we define the function once you can call this function any number of times in your source code or your program. So in our case we have the block one and then we call the function calculate age and then we have certain other block which deals with some other logic and then if you want to calculate the age again instead of repeating we just call the function again here then followed by execution of some other blocks. So as you can see here we have defined the function once but you can use it any number of times within your program. So that is one of the key benefit of writing the program instructions as one function. In the same manner, what you should try to achieve in your day to day programming life is that identify the set of instructions or the code snippets which is going to be repeated throughout your program or say across your projects. Make them as a function so that you, once you test that function module and then make it error free, then you can be very confident that you can reuse this code any number of times across your programs. Now let us check the syntax of a function. It starts with the function name followed by open and then we have various set of input parameters. Now as you can see here, it can have any number of arguments depending upon your implementation. In this syntax I have just mentioned there are two input arguments, input 1 and input 2. And I have mentioned type to be generic. So this is a variable name and this is the type of the variable. It can be any type as per your requirement. For example, in case of calculating age, it can be the date of birth being the variable and the type can be a string. So as you can see here, we, it can repeat any number of times or even in fact, a function can be even without any arguments. And then it is followed by the returns keyword and we mention what is the return type of the function. And the actual sequence of instructions are captured between start and the end keyword. In between we have the set of instructions to be executed. So to begin again, we have the function name followed by the set of input arguments, then the returns keyword mentioning what is the return type, then the start keyword, then the actual sequence of instructions to execute and finally the end keyword. This completes one function syntax. This is the pseudocode of the actual calculate age function which we have been defining before. So as per the syntax we have defined it as calculate age which is the function name and it has one argument which is the date of birth being the variable name and string is the data type. Then followed by the returns. It returns the data type as integer because we are going to calculate the age which is an integer number. So it returns integer and then we have start and then end. And here we have a set of instructions to calculate the actual age. Either it can be a single line or it can span multiple lines. 
Once you define this calculate age function, whenever you want to calculate the age of any given date of birth, you can just call this function any number of times. Whenever you call the function name, then it's going to calculate the age as per the instructions you have defined and then it's going to return you the age as the variable value. I also want to touch upon one of the terminology which is specific to function called function signature. What is a function signature? We have seen a function has basically three parts, only the function name and then the input parameters along with their types and finally a return type. A function signature refers to all these three parts together. So all these three parts together we just refer to as a function signature or a signature of a function. The main purpose of identifying it as a signature is we make sure we follow it as per the rules set. For example, in case of the calculate age, we have mentioned it accepts input parameter of type string and returns integer. So whenever we call this function, the we make sure that it, it accepts a parameter only of type string and doesn't accept any other type. Also, it returns only integer and doesn't return any other types such as a float or string. So we are defining a set of rules the function has to follow. If we go back to the function syntax, we have seen it has a function name, type, return type, start and end. As I said before, the function signature refers to the function name, input params along with their types and the return type. So this section is referred to as the function signature. So if you take one example, in case of our calculate age, we have mentioned calculate age is the name, date of birth is a variable name, the type is date and the return is integer. So this together is referred to as the function signature. So now, as I said before, this makes it very clear that whenever you call the calculate age function, you have to pass the date. Refer that I have mentioned date as one of the variable type where it is referred to the date of birth of a person and it, it is returning integer. So whoever is calling the calculate age can safely assume that this function is going to return only integer and then he can implement his logic accordingly. That is the main purpose of the function signature. In this video, we will see the different types of functions generally available in a programming language. Generally, we have two types of functions. One is a user-defined function and the other is a standard library functions. The user-defined function refers to those functions written by a developer as per the requirement in hand. So what it means is whenever you as a developer write any function, then that is a user-defined function. The responsibility of this function lies with the developer. Since you had implemented it, it is your responsibility to make sure that function is free of bugs and you have handled the logic as per what the function is intended to do. So the entire responsibility of functions lies with you. Almost the entire code is written inside various user-defined functions. So when you when a program or a problem statement is given to you and you try to solve by writing a code or a program, it's almost like you are going to write the entire source code in one or the other functions. So these all these functions are called as user-defined functions. The second type of functions are standard library functions, where it refers to a collection of functions which are predefined and available for use in the program. So these programs have been already defined as per a specific function signature and it's available for use ready-made by the programming language. These functions are safe to use because they have been tested thoroughly by the other developers or whoever has given these libraries. They can range from either a simple function or it can get as complex as possible. The function signature is defined by the system which refers to the programming language. Note that even there are third party libraries which you can use in your programming language even you can consider them as, as library functions because it's not defined by you. It's defined by the system or by the third party. So all these generally we refer to as standard library functions. One point I would like to make here is that it's always recommended to use the standard library functions as much as possible. The reason being these libraries typically have the functionalities which is getting reused often by any developers. So these are defined as one set of functions so that it can be used by anyone who is using this programming language or the library. So if you have a programming language and if you notice that 
the logic which you want to implement already is available as one of the library, then just go ahead and use it. You no need to reinvent the wheel always. Another advantage of using these library functions is that you will feel more confident in your code as you are reusing the code and also it has been thoroughly tested by various developers. So when you use these library functions in your code, it makes your code more flexible and it's error free as much as possible. Thank you for watching this video. In fact, this video is part of the course Fundamentals of Programming Languages for Beginners. I had created this course so that it acts as a guide for you to learn the foundations of coding to start your programming career. This course contains various sections such as Introduction to the Programming Fundamentals, Understanding Variables, Operators, Conditional Statements, Loops, Functions, Comments and Exceptions. Each of these sections comes with various lectures followed by the quiz and activities. These activities such as assignments as well as a quiz help you to apply the learnings you had done so far. Overall this course contains about 2 hours of videos along with the quiz and activities and various worksheets. If you are interested in this course then just click on the link present in the description below. See you in the course video. Till then, bye.